In Fire and Blood, you know, uh, George R. R. Martin makes it a point to say that this is uh, an account of history that's told by several sometimes unreliable narrators. So can we expect the show to take a similar approach, maybe Rashomon style, where we see different versions of history play out based on different people's stories? That's, that's each season is going to be the same story, but told from a different perspective. No, it's not. That's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, really? No. We're taking more of the approach that playing with the history as, as it was written, essentially saying that this is the objective truth that happened. And then many years later, because most most of those historical accounts that uh, Archmaester Gildane was sifting through, at least two of them weren't really around at the time, or at least weren't present as the events were happening. Uh, Mushroom was, if you believe Mushroom. The others were, uh, one was written kind of a after the fact, and then in Gildane certainly lived long after they did. So we're, we're taking the approach that history in its telling changes the story because you only ever know so much about what happened. The historian only ever knows so much about what happened, which is why primary sources and eyewitness accounts are so important, but we didn't have all of that in this. So the fun of this show, I think, is that it plays as a bit of a companion piece to the history book. It communicates with the history book in a sense that some, some things will, will line up, other things will be told very differently. In, in the end, the events are, are the same. It's just the why and how they happened that, that changes as you see the actual history. And you brought up Mushroom, who's a really interesting character because he's not an integral part of the story, but he is a narrator. So can we expect to see him in this show? TBD, I would say pay attention and stay tuned. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> can we expect major deviations from the book? Like say a character dies in the book and doesn't die in the show or something like that? Again, playing with the history as it is known, I think certain certain events will play out in ways that surprise the audience, given if they have read the book, given their understanding of the un underpinning history. Absolutely, and there's this is a little different than Game of Thrones in a certain way because you know you know how the characters' stories begin and end since he finished that story, but he didn't fully flesh out a lot of them, you know, internally. Um, so that was was that a gift or a challenge to know how their stories begin and end, but not have their kind of emotional or psychological blueprints. I think it was a gift because it gave us uh, uh, stuff to do and to think through the not the what they did, but how they did it and why they did it. Did you guys ever consider employing a flashback approach to the younger Rhaenyra and Alicent, or was it always going to be a mid-season time jump to their older selves kind of thing? One of the interesting things has been uh, playing around with kind of vernacular of the of the original show, the language that they used, and generally flashbacks were reserved for these visions in the original show, apart from maybe standalone moments like Cersei going to visit the witch the first time. And the, maybe the one time that we explored it, it just didn't seem to fit right. So our focus of tension really was on trying to tell the story uh, in the present rather than trying to go back and forth and breaking timeline. I think we both felt that because the nature of the story that we're telling is 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 pretty complex. The number of characters, uh, the, the amount of time that it spans, certainly over the course of the first season, that it felt like the easiest way to deliver that was in a linear uh, storytelling fashion. Yeah, absolutely. And Game of Thrones kind of had like the Starks as kind of your like initial heroes, but this show seems a little, the characters here seem a little less inclined to blind nobility as a lot of the Starks were. Um, so who here, if anyone, do you think audience will, audiences will find themselves rooting for? Hopefully they'll start with one and then they'll switch to the other and then they'll go back and forth and there'll be the greens and the blacks and they won't be able to decide which is which and people will have fights in bars over it. That's really what we're hoping for. So what do you think will surprise Game of Thrones fans most about House of the Dragon? We spent a lot of time really trying to nail that the tone and the voice of the original Game of Thrones to to try to make it seem like even though, even though it's 170 years earlier, it does feel uh, like it takes place in the same universe. Well, I believe that is all the time we have, but thank you guys so much. I can't wait to see more of it. And yeah, have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. Never imagined yourself on the iron.